My friends, I must admit something to you. I have a really despicable guilty pleasure. Something so unholy. I can't believe I'm about to say it. I love harem anime. I'm talking about those anime where one guy, whether he deserves it or not, is loved by bountiful countless amounts of women. So, to dig myself a grave and send me to the darkest pits of hell, I'm gonna tell you about ten of them, and I'm gonna rank them. Just so we're on the same page, there's two things that'll help me rank these shows. One is the anime itself, good. And two, how good is that harem? You see, you can have all the women into you that you could possibly imagine, but if they're all downright decadent ladies that are sleeping around and they'll just be with any man, well, there's not much quality to that. So, these 10 anime are gonna be completely and objectively ranked by me, the absolute expert of all things anime. And if you disagree with anything I'm about to say or that I'm an expert, you're coming to the fiery depths with me. Let's get into it. Have you ever thought to yourself, man, I really like it when women just hate me? Then you must be the main character of this show. Kazuya starts off the anime with his girlfriend breaking up with him in a way that would tear apart any man's heart. Sorry, I fell in love with someone else. Let's break up. Kazuya goes home, has a cry, and I think it's intimated some self Gratification. Don't tell me! She's already moved on with the new guy? Ah, oh man, this totally sucks! And why am I getting turned on by picturing that? <laughs> After that, he decides to use a service where you can rent girlfriends. Apparently something you can do in Japan. He immediately falls in love with the rentable girl, then figures out that they live right next to each other. I could go into how terrible the girl he rented is, or how painfully slow the show progresses their relationship, but after a certain amount of time, if you have to pay this woman just to spend time with you, and or not treat you like total garbage, at some point, I really just want you to get hit by a car. When it comes to the other romantic interests in the anime, Sumi's great. We all love her. Kazuya's ex-girlfriend enters the mix, really only because she's jealous, and another one who's there just to beg for Kazuya's children. Which, I guess isn't all that bad, but th she is nuts. What are you two up to now? Can you try to run away from me? No, sweetheart, I'm sure he's just an avid tree climber. On to the next. <laughs> Infinite Stratos. Now this show has a diverse set of waifus. Chinese, British, French, German, Japanese, etc, etc, etc. Now that is quite a lineup. I'm partial to the French babe because talk to me in that accent and I'll give you the keys to my house. Sure, why not? The other girls are fine too, which is good because the show itself puts our main character into an all-girls school. And at one point or another, each of these ladies gets to room with him. Ah, uh, you think real naughty stuff happens. There isn't a lot of that, but it's hilarious. <laughs> Why is it only number nine? Well, I don't remember the story. I think it has something to do with robots, aliens, communists. I, I just, I just don't know. Anyway, on to the next. Here's an example of a great show with a very mediocre harem. Off the top of my head, I can list you the archetypes. Painfully stupid bunny girl. Lolly vampire. Masochistic dragon. And a humiliating pain courses through me. And yet it's still such a sweet sensation. Okay. And then a regular girl who serves little to no substance for the story. The characters are about as cookie cutter as they come, but that's where the negatives stop for me. The show's a lot of fun. It's a sci-fi IZK with a very badass main character, some great action scenes, and the harem. While there's nothing new about any of the ladies in it, they are all visually appealing. Just woke up one day 
Now here's the story, gents. World's End Harem. You see, all the other men on the planet have died due to some unknown illness. So the girls have to revive the remaining frozen dudes to repopulate the planet. And guess what? You're one of them. Sign me up, son. The reason for this ranking is on the other side of the previous one. The show. It's very bad. Little to no sense of direction. A stupid, uncharismatic main character. And the Crunchyroll censorship is more offensive than whatever they're trying to black out. Seriously, what the fuck? If you can soldier through and or just ignore all that and, you know, perhaps get the original version with less than legal means, then you'll be able to enjoy the copious amounts of some of the most well-constructed, unique waifus ever. Most, if not all of them, are awe-striking in their beauty. And guess what? There's like three men in this universe. So they don't, these, these women don't have any choice. They have to, they have to be into them. So like, just pretend that's you and uh, sweet dreams. Seriously though, if you watch this, you're really gonna be finding yourself begging for someone to strangle the main character. He's got all these ladies that want a piece of him. But instead of, you know, doing what we expect, he wants to cure the illness. What is wrong with you, man? What, what? Either way, I think it's time to get on to the next one. Now you could argue, and I probably wouldn't disagree with you all that much, that Mashoku Tensei is the best anime on this list, just in terms of quality. However, the quote-unquote ladies of this quote-unquote harem are of a younger demographic. And listen, I'm not, I'm not here to criticize anybody. The main character is also a young boy, so... Well, I mean, I, I, I guess, uh... Let's just take the safe route and judge them by their personality and how downright adorable some of these little ladies are. Roxy's a bit prickly, but I like the color of her hair. Eris is from hell. I'll teach you to never raise your hand to me again! <laughs> Sylphie's cute, but kind of useless until the second season. And the little maid just, she gives me a heart attack every time I see her because she, she's just so cute. Oh, she's so cute in the little maid outfit. I think six is a fine place to put it. So let's move on to the next. We're at the halfway point, suckas, and it's data live time. A show about having to smooch demonic, monstrous, super-powered women. Failing to do so will cause these ladies to go nuclear, both figuratively and literally, killing countless people. So some way, somehow, the personification of dorkiness, otherwise known as our main character, must seek out these demon spirit ladies or something similar and kiss them into submission. Damn it, I wish it was that easy. The reason Data Live is so high up on this list isn't because all the women are particularly beautiful. They certainly are. And I wouldn't say it's because of the immaculate story either. In actuality, it's because even if you have no idea what's going on, like me when I watched the most recent season, like three years after the previous one came out, it's still a downright enjoyable experience. Every guy on this show is brimming with charisma. Take a scene where the main character is caught tickling his little sister, like a degenerate. This is not what it looks like. What did you just do to your little sister, you nasty brute? Yeah, what the heck is going on here? Even the one that has literally no personality somehow just shines a light through the darkness. So you're into little sisters? How convenient. I just happen to have these adoption forms on me, big brother. And I haven't even mentioned the preeminent waifu from the show, Karumi. Hold on, let me look something up. Close enough. I actually just watched the movie conclusion to quintessential quintuplets yesterday. Uh, one note, 
that's not quite how I would have ended it, but it, it, it was still fun. Let me tell you, if you've yet to experience the circus that is this anime, then you truly aren't a harem enjoyer, at least not officially yet. There's a few reasons for that. Five in total. The trouble-causing quintuplets, while technically all identical, are each incredibly attractive and come with varying personalities. From high energy, caring, and constantly annoying, to always quiet and collected. Are you into sundaries like myself? Well, then you're gonna be elated to know that Nino's in this show. She's so unbelievably mean, she drugs the main character immediately after being introduced to him. It's not like I poison them, you know? Goodbye. Huh? Huh? Wait, where? How did I? The wonderful thing about this anime is it flies in the face of a lot of harem tropes. The main character isn't just some blockhead. Usually the main character of harem anime is the worst. Often just brainless, unattractive morons. But Futuro isn't. He's a smart guy, handsome fella. And because of that, he gets to... Enjoy the presence of five very nice girls. A certified classic. 2008 might not seem like that long ago, but as you can see, modern animation has come a long way. Rosario plus Vampire is one of those shows where the women are of the supernatural variety. Vampires, witches, even frigid ice queens. This is a damn good show, and it set the precedent for a lot of different anime. Back in the day, the story of a young boy getting thrust into the world of inhuman women was a far newer concept. But don't get me wrong, that's not the only reason it's any good. Skune being threatened by a succubus only to show off how nice he is, of course leading to her sudden and absolute infatuation with him, is just as hilarious now as it ever was. There's only one use for men and that's a slave! They're just playthings to bend to your will! <laughs> I think she's had enough. Now I'm totally in love with you! I can only think of one super negative aspect about the show, and that's just Skune's relationship with Mocha. It's just... Oh, why can't you explore other options? I get it, she's cute. But, oh, shut up! Mocha. Skune. Mocha. Skune. Mocha. Skune. Penis! Whoa, 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 whoa. I have a confession. Apparently, I am a sexual deviant. Monster Mizumi, the story of one man's mission to survive against all odds as he takes care of a wide variety of women, all of which are different species. Why do I like Monster Mizumi so much? Well, you might be asking, are you a pervert? Yes. Do you have a strange predilection for women of inhuman descriptions. Also, yes. But put all of those aside and I can make a damn good case for why you should like and watch this show. The first point I'll make is the most childish out of all of them. Boobs. Bazoongas, bazingas, knockers, tubba dubs whatever you want to call them, they're here in droves. They're pretty much a stalwart companion to every scene in the show. The second point is far more mature, although just slightly. Every single girl is not only cute, adorable, and beautiful, they're also easily lovable, and when they come onto the screen, doesn't really matter which one, you just can't help but get filled with this overwhelming sense of warmth. You'd think the threat of being tied up by a masochistic spider who wants to toy with you in some incredibly perverse ways would frighten you, and it should, but in this case, you get this sense that the crazy gal just needs a hug. And that's completely wild, seeing that it's a massive spider woman. Before the viewer or even the main character get the chance to cringe at the sight of her, you get a backstory you can easily sympathize with. You get the boobies. You get 12 other reasons why you should like her and not be all that concerned she's tying up and toying with the main character. And that's pretty much true for all of the gals in the massive lineup of characters. Which is really my third point. There is a lot of schmexy gals. A lot. And that could definitely be a bad thing if the majority or even a big minority of them sucked. However, if I'm being honest, I, I can't think of any 
that I didn't love. I guess there was one. Um, I feel like she has a odd quirk I'm forgetting. <laughs> We've made it to the number one objectively best harem anime of all time. Objectively. And everyone should have expected it. Yeah. What was that? Yo, what it do? Four seasons, 49 episodes of unabashed nudity, including lines that are so salacious, I quiver in my boots to this day just remembering them. Half their size? I don't want to live in a world where Rias has a normal rack. High School DXD is a flat 10 out of 10 in pretty much every category. Even the story, not that it really matters. Here's a rundown. The main character is a hormone riddled virgin who gets seduced by a demonic woman with raven black wings. And for reasons, she tries to murder his ass. Succeeding in this by spearing the main character straight through the spine. He lays there, contemplating life like a philosopher. If you were gonna kill me, couldn't you have let me squeeze your jiggly jugs first? Man's got his priorities straight, son. But it's not time for him to clock out just yet, as a strange, crimson-haired woman appears to save him. He wakes up the next morning, figuring it must have been a dream. So, just to make sure he goes back to the place where it all went down, leading to him getting speared again. I'd rather be killed by a hot chick than a dude. Not cool! <laughs> This moron needs to be saved again, and yes, of course it's the crimson-haired lady that shows up, but also, the Babe Squad. <laughs> Waking up again the next morning, Issei, the main character, thinks, wow, that was, that was another really wild dream. Uh, it's kind of feels like there's something wrong with my bed. Oh my god! Turns out to get healed, he had to be embraced by a beautiful woman. Which, t I'm totally on board with that. If you think any of what I've just described to you sounds good, then you're really gonna love High School DxD. There's not much more I can say other than that. I mean, the show is what it is. Damn funny, damn sexy, damn everything. And it remains that way throughout all of its episodes and throughout all of its seasons. You could go ahead and stack all the positives from the other good harem shows in this list and just assume they're gonna be in high school DxD. Because they are. Unique, beautiful ladies, a pretty decent main character, funny dialogue that it's just impossible not to laugh at. Hold on a sec, what happened to all my clothes? Oh, I can see your tits! It's easy, if you like harem anime, you gotta watch high school DxD. It's freaking awesome. And with that being said, I feel like that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. I've been your American Otaku. This, of course, has been my co-host, Zero Two. Hope you enjoyed the new camera. I don't look so goddamn ugly anymore. Mwah.